Now, today marks the second anniversary of the Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan. Supporters celebrated the occasion on the streets of Kabul, where officials declared a public holiday. A Taliban spokesman warned they would resist international efforts to interfere in the country's affairs. Afghanistan's Western-backed government collapsed on August 15th, two years ago, after US-led forces withdrew, allowing the Taliban to take over. Well, since then, Afghan women and girls have lost many freedoms, and there's a long list of prohibitions and policies that deprive them of fundamental human rights. Women are required to, uh, required to wear the burqa, covering their entire body. Those who don't comply face harsh penalties. Women are currently banned from higher education and have also been largely excluded from the job market. That, of course, means a significant uh, drop in the number of uh, women who can earn money. Access to health care is another issue, particularly as women are only allowed to travel when accompanied by a so-called male guardian. And finally, uh, the Taliban forbid women from visiting parks, gyms, public pools and sports clubs, making sports and exercise practically impossible. But for some uh, Afghan uh, women, they told uh, DW that they welcome the end of the fighting since the Taliban took over. There were many suicide attacks under the previous government. People were afraid. Terrorism was at its peak. Everyone was worried. Now, the situation's good. Suicide attacks have decreased. The government still needs to do more to meet the demands of the people and bring security so that there is good governance. People need peace. And they want a competent and transparent government so that people can get their work done. My name is Farishta Hotak. Hello to all of you. Girls and women make up half of society, so their rights and education are very important. Two years is too long. They have had enough time and resources to solve all these problems regarding our rights. In the name of Allah, my name is Omiya Omid. I'm a student of the design department of Daria Academy. Before I came and studied here, and before the universities were closed, I was studying economics at Ketab University. But unfortunately, I remember well that during the exams of the last semester, we heard about the closure of the universities. And it was truly one of the toughest blows of my life. I was really depressed. I thought life had no meaning anymore. Hello, my name is Nagin Salimi. I was a ninth grade student when the Taliban took power in Afghanistan and closed our schools. We were disappointed. After the schools were shut, we turned to painting and calligraphy so as not to suffer from depression. Our request to the world is to ask the Taliban to do whatever is needed to lift the restrictions the Islamic Emirate has imposed on us and give to us our rights. In the name of Allah, I'm Basira Javadi, a 12th grade student. Unfortunately, the school was closed and we were left unemployed. I'm currently working in Darya Academy in the painting and design department. It is mentioned in the Quran that education is compulsory for boys and for girls. We also have the right to education. Our request to the international community is to open our school and at least support us in the field of painting and design. In Afghanistan, 
the life of girls and women is becoming more and more difficult. Many women here say living under the Taliban is like living in a cage. As a form of resistance, women and girls have taken to the streets to defend their rights. But the protests were almost always violently suppressed by the Taliban. Today, a number of women came to the streets to condemn the growing international recognition of the Taliban government. But they were met with violence as usual. Some of the Taliban attacked us at the front and others from the back. Meanwhile, the doors of Afghanistan's schools and universities remain closed to girls, depriving them of an education. The Taliban keep saying that they are working on a plan that will provide employment and education for girls. But that promise, which has been repeatedly given for two years, has still not been fulfilled. We studied for 12 years. We worked hard for 12 years. We studied at night. We invested a lot in our education. But under Taliban orders, the entrance exam cannot be taken until further notice. Girls can't participate in university entrance exams. In their report, the Rawadari Human Rights Organization says that the Taliban have ignored all accepted standards of human rights and continue to discriminate against women. Under Taliban rule, thousands of female civil servants have lost their jobs or been forced to stay at home. The Taliban have also imposed a ban on women's work in international organizations, causing global criticism. A large number of educated women who previously held jobs in government offices or were entrepreneurs have now started working in hotels, restaurants or in handicrafts. Mohammadeh is one of the few to still own a business. We are still operating. I pray to God that our restaurant will not be closed because all our workers have money problems. Each of them is the breadwinner of their own family. Some of the women who work with us have lost their husbands or their fathers. The latest restriction imposed on women has been the closing of beauty salons. Their closure has caused about 60,000 women to lose vital income earned from working in Afghanistan some 12,000 salons. Two years since the Taliban took power in Afghanistan, the status of women's rights there is dire. In a report released in June, the UN Special Rapporteur for Afghanistan, Richard Bennett, said that the discrimination against Afghan women and girls is the worst in the world. And joining me now for more from Doha is Taliban spokesperson and head of its political office, Suhail Shaheen. Mr. Shaheen, let's talk about women's rights in Afghanistan first. Why is the Taliban so anti-women? Uh, it is not true. Uh, it is uh, what is reported in the uh, Western media particularly, and they are biased. They do not know the ground realities in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, uh, women are part of uh, our society. Uh, they are our mothers, uh, wives, daughters, sisters. How can we uh, be against the women? That is the question that the international uh, we, community is asking. We, You're talking about some 55 percent of Afghan society. And just to uh, bring you up to speed, perhaps you already know this, the UN accused the Taliban of gender apartheid. If the Taliban is not anti-women, why does the UN accuse you of gender apartheid? So some of the reports we have rejected, and because they are based not on ground realities, they, they, those who are reporting such reports, they should come to Afghanistan and see the ground reality realities with their own eyes. Of course, uh, uh, the, the school, secondary schools are closed in the universities, but there is a committee uh, set up uh, to create an Islamic environment for that. The no Taliban has been... Our I'm sorry no to interrupt option. you, sir. The so Taliban has been it, trying uh, to create an Islamic environment for two years. How much longer will it take to create this Islamic environment? 
first of all, no one has denied uh, uh, access of women to education. But the Islamic community, uh, to create a, an Islamic environment is the demand of the, our people. We fought uh, for 20 years for, liber for liberation of our country and Islamic values. This is what our people want. Uh, there is no denial of their access to uh, we education. We have spoken to your people. We have, have spoken to, we have spoken to the women in your country, and they want education. They've been waiting for two years for education. Education is not happening for women, above, for girls above the sixth grade and for women in universities. When does this happen? Can you tell this to us on our program now? It will happen, but the, the, there is a, the, the committee is working that it may be delayed. You can say it is delayed, but no one can say we deny the uh, women access uh, to education. And it is um, uh, closed be, uh, because of uh, uh, the leadership uh, order of, until for, for the notice. It can be opened by uh, another order. So we create uh, the Islamic uh, environment because this was the demand of the people. So, uh, and also there is women working, about uh, 90,000 teachers are uh, working. They have their jobs in, in schools. The Similarly, jobs that, the, in the the jobs that they have the, access to are limited only to yes. the jobs that you will allow women to undertake a lot of women, the large majority that we have spoken to and that the UN experts have also spoken to in Afghanistan are being forced to sit at home. Are you saying that that is not happening? Yes, uh, well, uh, one thing I want, uh, when I'm uh, answer, please listen to me until I complete. If, ahead, if you sir. interrupt me, uh, yeah, the, the, listen, uh, the viewers, the, uh, the, those who are listening to us, they will uh, receive a half uh, reply, not a complete. Please go ahead, sir. So, uh, yes. So there, there are women working in the ministry, public health, uh, the nursing schools are uh, open uh, also. Um, medical uh, in the medical f fields, uh, other colleges are uh, open. Uh, right. The uh, lead doctor, lady doctors, they have full right to have specialization in various fields. Uh, while they were uh, limited to gynecology only in the past, so uh, uh, the same. Similarly, uh, about 8,500 uh, women uh, they receive the uh, 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 licenses. Uh, to work as a business woman. Uh, according to a report I uh, read yesterday, about 800,000 uh, women are working in Afghanistan. So this is the report from the Chamber uh, of Commerce of, of Women. So these are the realities. If you focus only on uh, <coughs> university and uh, secondary school just, for which we are working. For let me just clarify this. Working, can I just, just help us help, help me understand this so we can get the right information out? Are you saying that there is 800,000 uh, business women working in Afghanistan right now? Yeah, there is 8,500 licenses for uh, uh, trade licenses has uh, have been issued to women. Yet you all cancelled. Yet you all cancelled yeah. the lives, essentially the right. the, the futures yes, of 60,000 yes, women entrepreneurs who were running makeup salons, for example, and beauty salons after an edict was issued to ban these. Just a minute, I complete my, uh, my answer why you are interrupting me. So if you do interrupt me, the, the correct information will, could not be conveyed uh, to your viewers. But Which I'm trying is, to understand uh, the correct information. You said 800,000 women, and then you correct that figure yes, yes, to 8,000. Yes, yes, is it 800,000 yes, 8,000? Uh, 800,000. I will send you the report. After this, is, this, I will send my WhatsApp the report. You will see it uh, with. Uh, what is the uh, source yourself. of this report, sir, please? The source of this report is uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, for Women, because uh, the women ha have their own Chamber of Commerce. So this is coming from the Chamber of Commerce. This is the source, a real source. I'm not uh, I'm telling you about uh, on the basis of uh, rumors. Right. So this is a ground reality. Have you been to Afghanistan once? Or just you have uh, read uh, the reports and uh, based on that, you unbiased the reports. You are DW reporters have been to Afghanistan. DW reporters have been to Afghanistan. I just, 
if I, if you allow me, sir, I just. If you allow me, sir, I acknowledge. Do you? I acknowledge that there will be. Yeah, uh, I acknowledge there will be problems, but we are resolving them. The we are problems. Trying to resolve all the this problems. Issue, but at the same time, there are some progress in this field. They should not. Those reality should not be ignored, ignored or overlooked. Let's talk we about should, the reality. Let me just let me quote. Let me quote a neutral organization like the, the United Nations. The, you should hear me as well, the, sir. Let me quote a neutral organization like the United Nations. This is from people, you and experts, who did travel to Afghanistan and did meet people with the permission of the Taliban government. And they said, in a report submitted on the 19th of June earlier this year, they said, and I quote, grave systematic and institutionalized discrimination against women and girls is at the heart of Taliban ideology and rule. It is at the heart of your ideology, sir. So everything that you're saying right now that, no, no, does not seem not, to add up. Not, no, no, not true. This is uh, people who are uh, against us, who are opening our opponents, and they want to muddy uh, the water and then uh, fish in the troubled water. These are those. You are speaking on behalf of them. You are not speaking on behalf of, uh, as a journalist, as a neutral journalist, so, to show the ground realities to I'm the world. I'm quoting the United I, I Nations, sir. There may be some, 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 uh, some problem, but at the same time, there was a lot of uh, progress. Why you do not uh, uh, project those progress? Uh, progress? What is the not, progress it, that uh, Afghan I, women I, I, have I, seen I, under side, the Taliban? Is, uh, sorry? What progress have Afghan women seen under the Taliban? Yes, the uh, business women, they have uh, increased uh, more than 100 uh, person in comparison to the past. It's a, it is a reality. I will send you many reports. You do not have uh, or you do not want to mention those reports. You are all only focusing on some uh, negative thing to, to, con uh, to convey the negative picture of uh, today's Afghanistan. It is, I think, uh, against the code of journalism. Right. And Let then, us, help us, you, uh, help us me, clarify this. Please, Can I just ask please, you one question please, in finality? Me, let's, uh, just, let's just yeah, clarify this. Me, when will the Taliban be able to rectify the problems that prevent the Taliban from allowing women to access education? Yes, we are working at that. And we, we, ha we have uh, uh, made uh, progress in this regard. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, currently, uh, women in the Ministry of uh, Public Health, they are uh, receiving uh, education in nursing schools. The doctors are working. About 150,000 health uh, workers uh, and uh, nurses, uh, doctors, uh, and uh, to health uh, related... Yeah, my question was about general education, not specific education for which you require women doctors. But I'm afraid we are, we've run out of time, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today on DW News. Taliban spokesperson and head of its political office, Suhail Shaheen. Thank you so much, sir. Pashtana Durrani is an Afghan human rights activist based in Wellesley, Massachusetts. That's in the US. And she joins us now. Uh, welcome to DW. Thanks so much for your time. Um, can I start by asking you to tell us what you're hearing from uh, women and girls living under the, the Taliban's rules in Afghanistan? H how do they describe their lives to you? Well, for starters, I was there like um, two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. And uh, from what we have seen as so far, the Taliban have not opened schools. They have not let the women work there. Even uh, last week, they stopped girls from going further to school uh, post grade three or age of 10. So, so far, I think the women right every space that has been left, we think there is no space left, but they still find another space to close down on Afghan women and young girls. Yeah. My colleague from DW News Asia spoke to a Taliban a spokesman who said that Western media are not reporting on women's rights in Afghanistan correctly. I'd like to play you a clip from that interview um, and then I'll come right back to you. Let's take a listen. That those who are reporting such reports, they should come to Afghanistan and see the ground reality realities with their own eyes. Of course, uh, uh, the, the school, secondary schools are closed in the universities, but there is a committee uh, set up uh, to create an Islamic environment for that.
you can say it is delayed, but no one can say we denied uh, women access uh, to education, and it is um, uh, closed be uh, because of uh, the, the leadership uh, order of until for further notice. It can be open by uh, another order. So we create uh, the Islamic in, uh, environment because this was the demand of the people. So uh, and also there is women working. About uh, ninety thousand teachers are uh, working. They have their jobs in in schools. What do you make of what we just heard there? I mean, have you seen any evidence that the Taliban are working on a new way to, to give girls and women access to, to education, access to jobs? Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. So, Shaheen's daughters study in Doha, Qatar, right? They go to international school and they have access to those opportunities. By the time, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are by the age where they can now be graduated and come back to Afghanistan and teach. So, I think for me, the most important thing would be why is he not bringing his daughters back to Afghanistan if he thinks that Afghan women can learn and study and have access to all those sort of opportunities? Why are the Taliban leaders not bringing in their families? back to Afghanistan. That's the most important thing, especially female members. The second thing that you have to understand is like maybe there are 90,000 teachers, but are they getting paid? That's the most important thing. Are they teaching in high schools? That's the most important thing. How many graduates do we have from high schools in the past two years? How many midwives, doctors are graduating in the past two years? So one is when they talk and the Western media or the Western journalists or even the international uh, community listens to them. But one is when you provide numbers where you have built that capacity in the past two years. For me, they have done nothing and they won't do anything. And the latest, they have banned girls from going to a school post grade three. So that 90,000 employment is going to come down. And the same goes for women who are working in salons or anything of that sort of employment. Um, I don't believe them, but it's funny how they can still lie and they're still seen as someone legitimate. If we could just focus on the, the, the situation regarding education in particular, even if there were to be changes and education were to be opened up, girls will have fallen behind dramatically, wouldn't they? And, and this would have long-term consequences for, for Afghan society. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, in the past, if there were teachers and st uh, if there were students who were supposed to be graduating from midwifery school, now two years have passed, or at least one year has passed, given that they were in grad schools. Um, now, either they are married off, either they have fallen into poverty, or they have become refugees, so they cannot continue with their schools. For the girls who were in grade six or seven or eight, they are now falling behind, so they cannot go to school. And by the time the schools open, they won't have that access to the same grade what their age is, and they would need access accelerated learning. And from what we can see right now, the Taliban haven't built the capacity for accelerated learning centers either. So A, you're falling behind. B, your population is going to grow. C, in five years, you're going to need teachers, doctors, engineers, architects, scientists, midwives, anyone and everyone to run the economy. And you won't have that. Why? Because somebody uh, in Afghanistan, the leader of the Taliban, thought it's a good idea to shut down everything just because he has an ego problem. Short of the Taliban leaving power, can you sum up for us briefly, if you could, any way of improving the lives of, of Afghan women and girls in Afghanistan right now? See, the most important thing is you have to engage on solutions. You have to invest in learnings that is out of structured or infrastructural uh, buildings. You have to focus on investing in ways where women can access internet without having to deal with a lot of uh, fees. You have to make sure that there are teachers available for them 24 by 7. You have to make sure that they have access to all those platforms in their own native languages and they can get certification. And the UN and the UN bodies can provide them with learning passports so they can continue mm -hmm. learning even if they become refugees. I think those are most important things and what we tend to do is we don't focus on those solutions. We really don't want to focus on the solutions. We don't want to teach them. We don't want to invest in native languages. We don't want to invest in anything that's going to make sure that they don't lag behind. But we mm -hmm. definitely can, uh, the international community can definitely go and pose with the Taliban. So those are the sort of things that we have to navigate right now. Investment right. in thing that is focusing on Afghan girls. Human rights activist Pashtana Durrani, thank you so much for your time and for your insights today. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you.
DW spoke with an Afghan woman who made it to Germany and found a way to help women back at home despite the distance. The voices of her trainees keep Farah Nas Mohammadi focused. She gives online job training to Afghan women who are still in the country. Farah Nas fled from Afghanistan to Berlin after the Taliban took power in August 2021. The reason why I have started this initiative was imagining me back in my country, how I would feel hopeless, helpless. Women have been banned from most professions and barred from attending universities under the Taliban. It has exacerbated other problems, female suicides and forced marriage. How is life under the Taliban's rule? Every day, restrictions against women increase. Cases of women's suicide are on the rise. Our only hope now is online studying and online work. Farah Nas trains women in customer relations to make them attractive talent for Western companies. Working from home would be a way to circumvent Taliban's restrictions. We will give them the skills and the education that they need. So we could stop the forced marriage in Afghanistan as well by empowering and supporting women to become the um, income source of the family. Farah Nas is one of more than 30,000 Afghans who sought refuge in Germany following the Taliban's seizure of power. But her homeland is still on her mind. I feel they are forgotten, the women especially. My wish is to be connected with Afghanistan as much as I could and help them from here. With the Taliban's grip on power, Afghan women like Farah Nas are uniting remotely to defend their freedoms. Uh, Fareshta Abbasi is an Afghanistan researcher at Human Rights Watch. I asked her about the impact of these curbs and prohibitions on women's mental health. Um, thanks so much. Um, I think it's very, um, I mean, I think it's easy to guess and to, to um, understand that it would definitely be very difficult for women in Afghanistan if you're being denied of every basic right, basically, that you have. Um, women do not have the right to education, no right to employment, no freedom of movement. It means that they do not have any say in public sphere, they do not have any social life, and they are being pushed back to their houses. And one of the things that is very important is to know that these women used to go to work. These women used to be financially independent. And, um, and I mean, the friends that I still talk to inside Afghanistan are, are, are telling me that they're depressed, they have anxiety, they just cannot get over the fact that their life have changed so much in 24 months. Uh, and has anything improved for uh, women since the Taliban returned? Uh, I think it's a very interesting question to ask. Uh, no. Um, the Taliban have been, the policy, their policies have been very clear to restrict women's rights. And I think it's, it's, it, it's even not imaginable to expect the Taliban to, to improve anything for women on the ground. I mean, uh, I asked the question because DW has spoken to, to women in Afghanistan who have said, for one thing, that security has improved since the Taliban returned. Yes, but I mean, th this is one of the arguments that came out um, after the Taliban takeover uh, in 2021. But it's good to ask these questions from the religious minorities who are being attacked by ISKP uh, um, in Afghanistan, in their mosques, at schools, at maternity hospitals. We've documented and um, uh, have reported on the number of attacks that happened uh, by ISKP and religious minorities in Kabul and other provinces of Afghanistan, which has killed and injured more than 700 people. So. Um, uh, for me, I mean, you need to ask this question from those people who have lost their family members in these attacks and to understand if they feel safe inside Afghanistan. At the same time, when you're leaving an, an atmosphere of fear and dis uh, uh, disappointment, when you know that people are being extra, um, there are extrajudicial killing happening, people are being arbitrarily detained, it's very difficult to say that people feel safe in Afghanistan. Uh, and why do you think the international clamour to defend the rights of Afghan women and girls hasn't been more effective? 
There has been a number of condemnation and statements by international community in the past 24 months. Unfortunately, it hasn't changed anything on the ground for women. I would say that it's because the Taliban haven't been flexible to anything in the past 24 months. They have proved and shown us that they're not serious about respecting or protecting human rights. We're dealing with a group who's not responsive to anything. Good talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Faresta Abbasi from Human Rights Watch.